Okay, so as part of our backtrack from last week, we're going to go back over placing objects in perspective. Now, if you look in Canvas, there's already a little refresher on the horizon line of action points, but I will just put that down real quick. Your horizon line is the point where the sky meets ground. It is your line of sight, whereas the imagining point is the point where things leave your view, the point where things vanish in the distance, where things are no longer blurry, they're just gone. It's not saying that they're gone forever, and that they're not blinked out of existence, it's just as far as your eye can see. So let's make myself a quick little box here. This box is your picture plane. This line is a horizon line. This one here is a vanishing point. And from that point come out your vectors. These vectors represent everything, rather every direction, that your eye can go. Everything that goes towards that vanishing point. Everything caught within your view. So, what we're going over today is how we put this into that. The first thing you need to understand is that every 2D shape has a 3D form. Shape and form, remember that these are elements of art. And some of them have multiples. So for a square, we know that a square becomes a cube. But a triangle can be a triangular prism. Or it can be a pyramid. But how do we get these things in perspective? Because even though, yes, I have drawn a form here, that doesn't necessarily mean that these are in perspective. They're just forms, diagrams, figures. The key to drawing things in perspective is understanding that anything that is facing the vanishing point has to go towards a vanishing point. Rather, any side facing a vanishing point has to lean towards that vanishing point. So we're going back to our first example, where there's a line in the center, vanishing point in the center. And as you go into this, notice how I'm turning my page as I put things out. You want your vectors to be as straight as possible. And if you don't have a ruler or a straight edge, an easy way to get a straight line is to always move towards your down the hand. So, first off, we're going to put this rectangle in place. So, we'll start by just drawing a rectangle. Let's say, draw it over here. And to put this in perspective, to make it 3D, this face over here 
is going to be going towards our vanishing points. Now here's the rule. The top line and the bottom line of your form has to fit on one of these vectors. The verticals are what establish your object in space. So in this case, I'm going to say that my rectangle, rather my rectangular prism, is this long. I mean, it's basically this wide. And the top aligns with this vector, bottom aligns with this vector. And boom, you have a rectangle in perspective. Now let's try for something that is not square shaped, or at least vaguely square shaped. Let's go for a triangle. Now this one's a little more difficult because we don't have set sides. So once again, we're going to pick out two of my vectors. I'm going to pick this one and this one. Here's the bottom of the triangle. Point after the point. And keep in mind, that's a little perspective. And then I can just say add that. And there you go. All right, what about a circle? Now with a circle, you're going to be making something that's called an ellipse. So you're not putting down a circle per se, you're putting down more like an oval. So I'm going to put mine down here. This is a circle on its side. And then from there, Say so that, that, and boom. Now keep in mind, all of this is only because I chose specific vectors to touch down on each one. No one's going to necessarily be the same because I don't know how you're going to draw your vectors. Everyone draws theirs differently. And this applies no matter where. Your horizon line of vanishing point R. So let's say I want to draw a square now. A square would become a cube. I'm going to choose this vector and this vector to go off of. So there's my vertical. There's my other vertical. And that's square in perspective. Now, mind you, this is a square in perspective. If I want to draw a cube, same thing. Except then I add the other faces. The face that is pointing towards the vanishing point is the one that is going to be in perspective. Now, what does it mean by the bottom face? Same thing, actually. Because technically, it is facing that way. Now, the side is facing opposite the vanishing point. So it's going to stay like so. If you still want to add a little bit, a little bit of a three D effect, adding in these edges here, kind of like what you might see on a billboard, could still make this look even more three dimensional. And if you want to go all the way, let's say our our vanishing point is also our light source. A little shutting goes a long way. All right. 
So now the way. Let's do some practice. On your paper, draw two squares. Well, rectangles really. These would be fixture planes. You have a horizon line in the center for the vanishing point. That's to the right. And you have a horizon line that is farther up with a vanishing point in the center. And for two shapes to each one, you're going to give me a square, a circle, a rectangle, and yeah, sure, let's just say a triangle. Now, I want you to put these in perspective according to where your horizon line and vanishing points are. Once you do like this, then we'll move in a two-point perspective. Just placing objects in two-point perspective. Don't worry too much about building things in two-point perspective just yet.